At this time, will you please welcome Apostle Jeff Inglehart as he comes to minister. Good morning. So glad you're all here today. And um, are you familiar with these terms? Look up here at these terms on the, on the, look up here at these terms. Right on the next slide. There we go. What's wrong with you? Has anyone heard that before? I'm not asking, I'm not saying that about you. I'm just saying, have you heard these terms before? What about, why do you always, and you can fill in the blank. Do you know what I'm saying? What about, why can't you be better, or why can't you be like so-and-so? Has anyone ever heard those words before? You might have heard them from a teacher. You might have heard them from a parent. You might have heard them from a spouse. You might have heard them from a significant other. You might have heard them from a sibling. But uh, the truth of the matter is you might even heard it at work from a boss, an employer. Huh? Absolutely. What's wrong with you? You know, we, we go through things, we go through stages in our lives, and, and if you're a mom or dad, you probably spoke a statement that you've regretted. Has any parent here spoke anything? Our teenagers are gone this weekend. You can say, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get it. I, both my hands are raised. And I think we've all been there at some point in some time in our lives or relationships. And I'm not one to criticize. I've misspoken to my children and my spouse a time or two. And Denise is down there like, mm-hmm. And, um, but how about, how about other things? How about you always? You know, you kind of get the point out there. You, you always. And, or how about, why don't you ever? Huh? Those are some other statements that we, that we kind of hear. They're, they're condescending statements. They're, they're accusations that immediately put your defense up, get your dander up, make you want to get into a fighting mode. Yeah, you want to go there? Come on, bring it on. I've got big guys behind me. They're coming right now. You know what I'm saying? But isn't that the truth? You want to start immediately start fighting with your words when you hear those kind of statements or those kind of words, and you go from feeling good to not, so good. You feel less than. Well, I know I'm, I'm not proud of, of maybe those things that I've, that I've spoken maybe under my breath or even spoken to my family or uh, others sometimes. Um, and it's because, I think it's because the scripture in Matthew chapter 15, 18 says this. It says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. They come from the heart. So what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. Hmm. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? That means that those things that are coming out of your mouth are already planted, first of all, in your heart. Not just this heart. They're in the heart of your mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your words don't only damage others, they can also damage yourself your reputation, and uncontrolled words cause arguments, they cause frustration, they cause irritation, they cause angerness, they cause bitterness, they cause strife, they cause worry, they cause relentlessness, anxiety, and even divorce. Isn't that right? Or maybe even a job loss. Your words can even cause you to lose your job, just to name a few things. Plus, when we go about complaining, whining, insulting, or attacking, gossiping, or, or even faulting someone else, that, well, it's their fault. Well, what ends up happening is you feel good at the moment that you might have said it, but later on you start regretting what you said. You start thinking about what you said. You know, time has a wonderful way of, of warping, and all of a sudden you find yourself thinking those thoughts. Why did I say those things? Huh? Why did I say those things? Why did I speak those things? And we all know that once you speak something out of your mouth, it can never be taken back. It can never be reclaimed. Because words once spoken can never be reclaimed. We're, well, just because you're right doesn't mean that you're right for saying it. You may be justified. You may be right in, in saying what you're saying to the individual. 
But just because you're right does not mean that you're right. Sometimes we don't do it with the right motive. Sometimes we don't do it in the right attitude. Sometimes we don't do it in the, in the right, let's just face it, a picture is worth a thousand words. Sometimes you don't have to say anything at all. Your facial expressions and your gestures, maybe the wagging finger and maybe it's not this finger. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe it's, it's the things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. Huh? And, uh, well, we're in a series entitled Decree a Thing. And sometimes I believe it's how you say something. It's how you're decreeing to other people. It's how that you're speaking life over the other people that mean something in your life. Because words have meaning. Words have power. And our theme scripture comes from Job chapter 22, verse 28. It says this, you will decree a thing and it will be established. How many know that when you speak things out of your word, uh, when you speak words out of your mouth, they become established? And you say, well, how can they be established? Well, if I speak something positive or negative, it's going to have a positive or a negative establishment in your life. Because immediately you're either going to be offended or immediately you're going to feel good. Isn't that right? My mom, when we were growing up, she had two boys. I don't know why she used these two words, but she would use these words with my brother and I. Now, boys, are they bloom words or are they wither words? And I'm just like, Mom, bloom words? Really? Bloom words? And she says, that's right. Are they, are they causing life? Are they causing growth? Or are they incurring death? And you know what? Every one of us have that ability to either bring life or death from the words that we speak. So what are your words establishing? What are your words establishing? The Bible assures us that our words and the language that we use are very powerful. And it affects the way we see things. It's our perspective. It's our attitude. And the Bible warns us to take every thought into captivity to the pulling down the strongholds. So in other words, we have to think good. We need to think pure. We need to think holy. Going far, as far as even stating that the power of life and death is in the power of your tongue, according to Proverbs chapter 18, 21. You have the power of life and the power of death in your tongue. It's our words, our words. If our words were not powerful, God would not have written these scriptures for us to understand. If our words had no, had no cause and effect, God would not have told us so. But instead, he's telling us, he's saying, your words affect other people. Your, not only just your actions, but your words affect other people. How are we affecting or infecting other people? You know, this week is, is Valentine's Day, and, and it's, it's, the time where, it's the time where the guys pull out the romance once again when they've left it somewhere else all year long. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that time where they, they, they pull that romance within them, out of them, to be able to, to say all the right words that she wants to hear. Come on, guys. I, I, you just don't have to sit there. You're guilty. Don't look at me like that. And, uh, and, and I know that throughout the year, you also say nice things to, to her, and that, that, that's great. That's wonderful. And if you're, if you're single here, sitting here this morning, I want you to realize that you have, the, you have the prime time right now to watch other people's examples. I had 33 years to watch other married couples, things they did right and things they did wrong. And guess what? If you ask my wife, I still didn't get it all right, but I'm not all wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and so, so if you're sitting here this morning and, and, and you're single right now, I want you to know that, that singleness just might be temporary for you. And what are you declaring? Have, have you, if you made statements like this, I will never trust another man again. Or have you, have you said, I will never allow another woman into my heart ever again? Because if you've said those things, you've declared something, you've established something deep in the recesses of your heart, and you need to go back and dig up those words and say, Lord, forgive me for stating those things in the heat of the moment, in my frustration. How many know what I'm talking about? Because without you knowing, 
You did something yourself. You, 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 you put something there. You placed something there. And I, I want you to know that we, we all, I think many of us go through situations in life. We go through a, a hurt relationship or a failed relationship. And I'll say, I'll never let them in again. I'll never, I'll never allow people to get that close to me ever again. And, and we don't realize, but we're actually establishing things in our lives that are the wrong things. Because God is all about relationship. Now, I'm not saying don't have parameters of relationship. We all need to have parameters of relationship. Amen? Safeguards. You know, just because you go out on the first date, the second date, the third date, the fourth date, the fifth date, the tenth date does not mean you jump in bed with them. Because if he doesn't have to buy the cow, why, why get the milk for free? Do you know what I'm saying? I want you to think about that statement for a moment. Because ladies, you're worth more than that. You're worth more than that. And guys, you don't have to be like that. God has something better intended for you as well. But that's not even in my sermon, so I don't know how I got there. But anyhow, if you're in a marriage this morning, I want you to think about Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 12. It says this, Though one may be in pow- overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You know, sometimes even in our friendships and our relationships, we can, have those, we can have those cords, we can have those people, that structure that's around us that helps keep us safe. And if we were to stumble, if we were to fall or fail, they're there to kind of encourage us and, and they speak, they help speak over us and say, you know what, God forgave you, let's get, it. Let's get moving on. Or, or hey, you know what, I, I, I know that happened at work, but you know what, you're not that kind of a person. Don't worry about their words that they're saying over you. You know, we all need those kind of people around us that encourage us, that help us get us back up and get moving forward. But pay attention. Pay attention to the, to the struggles and the triumphs that your friends are going through. And for God's sake, look for the struggles and the, and the triumphs that your spouse is going through. Celebrate those things in their life, but also speak into their life in those areas where they feel like they're fail, failing or struggling with. Or are you the type of person that wants to continue to speak about their failure? Ooh. I don't know what that was. But can you imagine that? Can you, can you think about that for just a minute? If you, were, if you were thinking about, are you that kind of person that is speaking into someone's struggles to make them struggle more? Well, what do you mean? Well, all right, they failed in something. Or, they, or let's just do something very basic. They forgot to pay the bill. They got busy with life and they forgot to pay the bill. The bill came in the mail and all of a sudden you, you're all upset and you say, why don't you ever pay the bills on time? Okay, it, it happened once. Or you're not responsible. Why aren't you ever responsible? Are you the type of person that is speaking into their destiny that they're never responsible or are you declaring over their lives hey I know it was a mistake this time I know you're not going to do it next time or hey honey let me let me help set a reminder on your phone or let me help you let's set a reminder around the house or let's put it on the calendar or, or whatever whatever that reminder is are you that person that is cheering somebody else on in life or are your words declaring over their destiny that they're less than or that they're not ever going to succeed I want you to think about that this morning because I know in relationships sometimes we get into heated situations and discussions and sometimes we let all the words just flare out there and it brings death it doesn't bring life and you're actually decreeing over someone's future that's why God said to hold on to your words that your words are important they're impactful in any relationship that you are that you have whether it's a friendship a working relationship a family relationship or a marriage remember this remember once those words are spoken they can never be reclaimed here are four quick verses that I want to give you this morning that will help us bridle our tongue, give us wisdom in our relationships so we're declaring the right things and not the wrong things. If you're taking notes, you're going to run to write this down. Number one is Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Colossians chapter 3, 12 through 14. It says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, 
Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear means to endure or put up with. What? You mean I got to put up with somebody? Yes, you do. It says bear, endure, to put up with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now let's back up. In, in, the, in the, the first part I want you to see is it says clothe yourself. That means that you literally have to do something about it. It actually means that you have to be, you have to be purposeful about putting something on. Isn't that right? You have to be purposely about putting something on. That means you've got to clothe yourself. You've got to put on these things, just like we, just like we spoke about in 2 Peter chapter 1, 5-9, through 9, add to your faith. You have to be proactive to add to your faith, just like you have to be proactive to put on, put on yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Trust me. On a Sunday morning when we're all flying around the house and when the kids are home especially, <laughs> and we've got to be out of the house at a certain time, <laughs> patience is one of those things I've got to clothe myself with because things unpatience wants to come out of my mouth. And unpatience wants to come out my ears and my nose and my eyes get red and bulge. You know what I mean? Uh, come on. You know, I mean, just think about that. When you're, when you're, when you're, running, uh, when you're running late to, 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 the, to getting your child to sports or to game or activity or even to school or whatever it is, you don't want to be the person that's running late, do you? And then you have to have impatience rather than the word says put on patience. How about kindness? How many times, how much kindness can you put on when you've heard the same story over and over and over and over again. But yet the word says, put it on. That's why the Bible says you've got to forgive someone 70 times 70 in one day. In one day. What? <laughs> That's what his word says. 70 times 7 in one day you've got to forgive somebody for the same grievance. So I, I love that. The hardest people... To be politically correct with those are the ones that you live with. Have you ever noticed that? Why? Because they already know you. They already know your faults. They know your failures. They know your shortcomings. They know, they know, they know what's good about you, what's bad about you. Huh? It's because they know everything about you. And yet, when we get with our, with our families and our relatives, we have the least amount of patience with those. And yet the Bible doesn't say, hey, with your family, you, you don't have to put those things on. Matter of fact, it says you put this on all the time. Matter of fact, the way that your relatives are going to know that you're a believer in Christ is they're going to see a transformation of Christ's character in you. Does that make sense? They're going to see actually Christ's character on the inside of you by the actions that are on the outside of you. So put on. Put on. A gentle answer turns away wrath, according to Proverbs 15.1. It says this, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Just because one person decides to spew anger out of their mouth, how are you going to respond to that one person? For some of us, we have to walk away because we know that we're quick-witted and sharp-tongued. I am. I could destroy somebody with my words. And I realize that, you know what, that is not a gift. That's a fault. And I have to just bite down on my lip and walk away. And then my wife comes in about 30 minutes later. Well, aren't you going to say anything? <laughs> not yet. I'm not to that level yet. <laughs> huh? Know the person you're living with. Know the person that you, that you said I do to. Know, know the situations and the people that you work with. You know, sometimes it's better for you not to say anything. Well, what's that old saying that your parents used to tell you, your grandparents used to tell you? If you have nothing good to say, don't say it at all, right? If you have nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Sometimes we've got to be those people. Just button it up, walk away. It also says this. 
Think about this for a moment. Be diligent not to make declarations of never and always. Of never and always. My son reminded me. I, um, I told him, I says, now, son, after, after, after my meeting and I get home, I'll take you to the, I'll, we'll make it to the store tomorrow. After, I, after my meetings, after I get home, I'll go to the store tomorrow. Well, something came up. There, there, was, there was an emergency that came up at the hospital, and I ended up at the hospital. And I came home, and my son said, you said you would take me to the store, and the store is closed. I said, son, I'm sorry, something came up. Dad, you never keep your word. And I said, son, you're going to judge me on this, one for, on this one circumstance, and you're going to say never, because if you want me to never keep my word, I can do that with you. Hmm? Just because we tell our children something and we promise them something, they also need to know that life happens. And sometimes in the midst of things, life happens and you can't do what you've scheduled to do. How many know schedules change in life? Isn't that right? Now I know the word says that you let your yes be yes and your no be no. But sometimes life happens and life comes up. And... Um, and then after, after him and I talked about that conversation, and uh, he's like, you're right, Dad. And I says, how about we do this? How about we try to go tomorrow? Let's see if we get to it tomorrow. See, th that gives you an out, parent. You know what I'm saying? I learned that really quick. You know, I had this young lawyer living in my house, Taylor. She's in law school. And, and uh, man, I'll tell you what, she held you on every, every sentence, every word, everything. I started learning the loops around that. You know what I mean? I started, I started putting all the, all the back doors in my sentences. You know what I mean? And, um, but it's, it's important. It's important for your yes to be yes and your no to be no. But watch out for those words that when you say never. Stay away from those never and always words. The only words that, that should be used never and always is Always God is faithful. Amen? Always God is faithful. Never put your trust in something other than God. Amen? How about, how about he, she will never change? He'll never change. She'll never change. Watch out. First of all, this is a lie. I'll prove it to you this morning. Everyone is changing moment by moment. Matter of fact, you changed by coming in here this morning. You changed, some of your continents changed just because we got into praise and worship. And, and something began to happen in you in praise and worship. For others of you, you've heard some statements that I've said today, and you're like, that's really good, and you've heard some good information, and you've, you, you're already, you've already imputed it in your mind, and you're like, that's good information. And all of a sudden, you just changed. Didn't you? You just changed. Because the more that you add to yourself every day, information is bringing transformation. You're changing all the time. All you have to do is look in the mirror and then look back at a picture of yourself 10 years ago to know that you've already changed. So people are always changing all the time. Everyone is changing moment by moment. Proverbs chapter 10 uh, verse 11 says this, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Why? Because every time you open up your mouth and you say something foul or evil or ignorant, it creates a war. Isn't that true? But every time you're being right and you're being righteous, not self-righteous, but you're just being righteous, you're, 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 being, you're being slow to anger. You, you, how, how many know I'm talking about? You're being kind with your words. Now you're showing righteousness. You're bringing life, you're bringing health, you're bringing love. We can actually learn how to speak life into the lives of people that we love in such a way that it really encourages and changes them. Encourages and changes them. Have you ever seen... a? an animal at a, at, a, at a shelter, a beaten animal at a shelter, many times they're, they're, 
they're, sometimes they can either be mean or they can be timid. And all of a sudden you start showing kindness and love to that animal. And the more that you do it, and the more that you do it, the more they change. I'm not saying humans are animals, unless the shoe fits. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Because the truth of the matter is, is, is it's, it's like, that, it's like that, that kindness. When you show kindness, kindness is going to return to you. When you show love, it's going to return to you. Your words, they matter. Number two is this, Colossians chapter 4, 6. Colossians chapter 4, 6. Let your conversations always be full of grace. There's that word always. If you've got your Bibles, you can underline it, always. Always full of grace, seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. Now, I know some of this stuff is very basic this morning. But you know what? If our world was acting and responding as this says, what kind of a place would we live in? Hmm? Let's build this kind of a community to show other communities how to live. Let your words always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Reflect before responding. <laughs> reflect. What that scripture is telling me is reflect before responding. Before you respond to a spouse, a friend, a neighbor, a relative, or another person at work, before you respond, would you just take a moment and reflect before you're going to speak? Because I guarantee you, if you reflect on what you're going to say before you say it, things will go well for you. Many times I find myself, you know, texting the response. I know what I'm talking about, texting the response, and then I read it, and I think, nope, and I delete it. <laughs> and then I rewrite it again, and I read it, and then, I, and then maybe I'll change a word or two, soften it down a little bit, and then I'll send it. Because I, I want to bring correction, but I don't want to bring shame. Did you hear what I just said? I want to bring correction, but I don't want to bring shame, fear, or guilt on somebody. Isn't that right? Soften your words. Soften your words. Reflect before you respond. Consider how might Jesus respond. Can I just... Can I, just <laughs> I got in trouble the other week. I'm not on Facebook every day but, I, but I, try to, I try to go on and just get some highlights throughout the day of people just, just, just let them know hey I'm connected you, you, you matter you know what I mean because people matter and as I was on Facebook someone put something on there and, and they said well you know and, and it, was, it, was, it was political their, their, their statement was political and they said well Jesus wouldn't be acting that way and I said oh yes he did my statement wasn't political I was just correcting, when someone said Jesus would not respond this way, I had, to re I had to correct them and say, Jesus called somebody, you whitewashed tomb, you serpent, you snake, you child of hell, you liar, you fool. These are words Jesus used. You brood of vipers. That was politically correct, wasn't it? So you know what? If you're going to speak for Jesus, make sure that you're representing him well. Amen? But I, I just wanted to un, for that person to understand that to an audience that Jesus needed to project to, which were the religious leaders of the day, he had to use some really strong words in order to show the opposite view and the opposite because he was trying to reach those that were lost. And he realized that the religious leaders were lost as well. The religious leaders should have known better. I believe our political camps today, they, they should know better when they speak. Both camps should know better. How many know I'm talking about? Number three, Proverbs 15, 4, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes a, the spirit. Your words, our words can make or break our relationships. They will give life or they will steal life. So before you speak, ask yourself, is what I'm going to say going to add life 
or is it going to deplete life? Is it going to add value or is it going to take away value from someone's life? Think about that for a moment. Am I going to add value? Truth of the matter is, we ought to be thinking, will it produce blessing or increase fear? Because if it increases blessing, if it's righteous, we know that that's the kingdom of God. Because righteousness, peace, and joy, such as the Holy Ghost, such as the kingdom of God, if it produces fear, God is not the author of fear. So anytime fear comes your way, you just automatically need to know that's not godly. If it's producing fear in me or if I'm producing fear in my children, that's not godly. Because God's not the author of fear. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. So, as the, as the praise team makes their way back up here this morning, I close with this last one. It's number four. Number four is this. Proverbs 21, 23 says this. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Have you ever been around one of those those, those persons, that there's just drama. It seems like drama ensues around them all the time. There's just drama, 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 drama. It's because they forgot to guard their mouths and their tongue, and it's not kept them from calamity. Instead, calamity follows them. Calamity chases them. So the next time that, that you want to speak out something, make sure that you stop and say to yourself, is my words going to bring calamity today? Because if it's going to bring calamity, I need to watch out. I need to be careful. I need to be cautious with these words. Unless I want chaos, unless I want drama to ensue around my life and the lives of those I love. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Let me ask this question. Has, has there been strife maybe in your home? Has there been strife in your relationships, maybe at work? Has there been strife in your friendships, family members? How many know strife is, is always going to show its head somewhere in your life? It's going to just come up. It's going to spring up. It's going to happen. But what you do with it makes all the difference in the world. The way you respond to it is going to make a difference in your life. It's about putting on the character of Christ is, who Christ is. Gentleness, meekness, self-control. It's a matter of a wise person to pause before they speak. Ask God what he wants you to do and then respond accordingly. Stop, ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do right now? And then act accordingly, what he wants you to do. Here's a couple of questions up here on the board this morning for you to think about. Is there someone in your life who needs an affirming word that will shape their destiny? Because you need to realize your words shape destiny. They can shape your destiny, the destiny of other people, your children's destiny, your family function, your family's destiny, the words that you're speaking out, the things you're declaring out of your mouth is actually affecting destiny. And is there someone that you can think of this morning that needs affirming words that will help shape their destiny? The words of life, the words that are coming to them that are saying, you can do this. I believe in you. You've got this. You've got what it takes. If God be for you, who can be against you? Come on. Start speaking life of affirmation to people. The second one is this. What declarations will you speak in your own relationships? What words of life are you going to begin to declare in people's lives? When I see somebody downhearted, I say, you know what? God said that you're more than a conqueror. You might not feel like that today, but the word says that you're more than a conqueror. That you're going to be able to overcome this because he overcame all the things in the world. And if he overcame everything in the world, including death 
in life, I'm telling you what, he's made you more than a conqueror. You might not feel it right now, but you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Huh? Let's look for those invaluable moments that we can impart life, impart life to somebody. I recently received a card with a letter inside it. Maybe you need to just text somebody today. Maybe you need to, maybe you need to write them a a letter or send them a card. I, I want you to realize that even during pastor appreciation time, when you all gave me cards and I read the cards and I read the letters and and um, it was encouraging. recently somebody sent me a card and I put a letter inside of it and I read it and I it was it was on one of those days that was less than encouraging you know what I'm saying has anyone ever had those days those days will come you're more than a conqueror even through those days and as I saw that letter and I read that that letter and I saw the card and I read it I just I just started thanking God for them and then all of a sudden it's like the Holy Spirit just revealed to me I just started thinking about this couple and I thought, you know what? They've been through a lot of things the last couple years. And look, God, look how you sustained them. Look how you sustained them. And then I just started thanking God for his sustaining power in their life. Because they've been through some really bad things, really hard things. And I just started thanking God for that couple. Along the way, extend yourself grace. Be gracious to yourself because we don't always get it right, do we? And in the way of extending grace to yourself, make sure you're extending grace to other people as well. Be sure to learn from the outcome of hurtful words of the past and develop a plan to speak more wisely next time. For if you change your words, you'll change others' lives. If you change your words, you begin to change your world around you because you've been begin to declare just as God himself declared to the heavens and the earth. He just said, let there be life, and there was life. And you and I were made in the likeness and in the image of God. That's what the Word says. That's what the Bible says. So you get to speak life. So speak life today. Amen? Stand up with me this morning. We have our ministry response team coming this morning. Our prayer partners are coming this morning to pray with you. There are elders and others that are here to pray with you and to to agree with you about anything that you might be facing in your life. Maybe maybe you just have something that you, like, I need hope. I need need some help with this. And they're down here to pray with you this morning. And um, they're here to pray with you and to bless you. So be an encourager this week. Be an encourager. Be a blessing. A source of life and someone people can trust in. Amen? Amen. Let me bless you as we go this morning. Father, thank you that you bless us on our coming in. You're blessing us on our going out and our lying down and our rising up. Help us to understand that the words that we proclaim out of our mouth, we're making declarations. We're declaring over people's life. We don't want to declare death over their life. We want to declare they are successful. They are more than a conqueror. They are an overcomer. They can get through this. Even though storms of life are going to come, they're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And that you're going to be with us through every storm, every trial, every tribulation that we go through. Lord, I even know that even this morning, I know that you're in the storm in some people's lives right now. You're in the midst of those storms with them, and you've not left them, and you're not leaving them. So, Lord, as they're in that storm this morning, I'm asking that they they would just sense your presence, that they just have peace in the midst of their storm for others that are here this morning God I thank you that you just brought them through a storm and they're just here thankful that you brought them through it unscathed but their character is better for it thank you for who you are in our lives today help us to be the blessing we're supposed to be in the communities around us in Jesus name and everybody said amen amen Maxine Klein it says, it says that you, uh, it, it says that, that, that you won a prize at the back. Make sure to pick it up. Peyton Werner, for the kids, he won something in the back. Make sure to pick that up as well. 
and make sure to pick up something sweet or something beautiful at the table in the back today on your way out. Amen? Amen. God bless your day. God bless you. See you next Sunday.